in terms of why I say the study Quran is not tafsir, is because usually when tafsirs are written, they're written for identifying the teachings or the doctrines of a particular school of thought. Or they're written, a lot of them will be like, Qurtubi's tafsir will give you a lot of legal arguments and guide you through a lot of the legal implications of particular verses in addition to many other uh, things that it does. But we're not trying to do that. We're not trying to say this is not a volume that I think that you should pick up um, and use as a guide for how you should do your wudu. All right? This is not a volume uh, that I think another scholar should pick up and use as a guide for that. This is a volume that you could pick up and see, oh, this is a place that this is a verse that scholars thought was important for understanding how to do wudu. All right? That is your ablutions. This is a verse that scholars thought was important for, oh, this is interesting. This is the verse that scholars thought was very important for discussing issues of free will and predestination. Now, we're not saying what position you should have regarding free will and predestination. All right? But these are the discussions that people are having. Whereas, if you go into a classical tafsir, they will often be telling you, according to the Asharite school of theology or the Maturidi school of theology or another school of theology, what your position regarding this issue should be. And we don't have any interest in that. This is not what we're trying to do with this. So in other words, it's not a text. This is a text that, as a Muslim, you could pick up and you could explore the tradition, but it is not in any way viewed as being prescriptive on either an intellectual level or a, a practical level.